Um, so there's a couple of things I want to mention um, before we get started. The first one is after last week's class, I got a huge and um, diverse response from you all. Uh, as you recall, last week, instead of just learning the technique of working an energy center, we learned to um, to bring the energy together and send it out to create like a heart-based mandala of love. Um, and we sent it out to the Black Lives Matter movement and the peace marches and, um, you know, so there were a number of you who were really excited to get a practical application to the work that we're using. And of course, that's what we did last time. You can do that same technique on your own, you know, like, you know, I encourage you to go to my website and bring that program up and practice with it again and again. So you're not just sending out love. And the nice thing about love is anyone who's going forward with any love-based work and they need more love, that grid that we created is there for them to tap into. And any other grids of love, it can connect with them and power each other up. Um, sometime in the future, I'll talk to you about working with the energy grids and uh, creating and utilizing mandalas. Uh, there are mandalas grids, networks of energy all over our planet. And it's no different than the connection of your chakras. Like we are living mandalas, which is a bit of what we'll explore later in today's class. We are each of us living mandalas of energy. What kind of energy depends on our imagination and our choice. Um, and whatever energy we have, if it's terror, anger, harmony, is what we put out there. Um, and if there is terror that comes to you, and these days we're seeing a lot of that, you do not need to absorb the terror to acknowledge it. Because you are like master or mistress of your domain here you have the ability to bring in the divine love and send your grid of energy out to whatever it touches. So if people are scared, you can send the love to them without absorbing their fear. Um, which is why it's so important when there are people out there saying, we're trying to make a positive change, we could use your support that we support them through the divine channels. We do not need to absorb the energy of whatever it is they're trying to get rid of. We just add to the energy of what they're trying to replace it with. So a lot of you were really grateful. I had some amazing conversations in messages, emails, telephone, Zoom about this. Some of you, you know, uh, contacted me and I'm not calling anyone out here. Trust me, if you feel like I'm calling you out, just know that that's we'll get to that in a moment. But I'm not calling anyone out. I had so many conversations about last week's lesson. There are a number of people who called me out saying I made them feel bad, that I made them feel like I was calling them a racist or calling them privileged or saying that um, they're the cause of the issues or like absorbing a lot of personal distress and targeted. So that is a very fair, I mean, however we react to what's going on is our reaction. Therefore, it is a fair and valid reaction. Um, I would never dismiss anyone on their auto response to any situation. The question is then, what do you do with it? If I say something to you that makes you feel bad, and because you feel bad, and I'm the one who made the initial action that triggered the bad feeling, at that point, you can become 
reactive or active. And with the harness your inner fire class, we are converting our reactive space to an active state space. So again, whatever response you have is natural. I can be highly triggered and reactive after years of practicing this. But if I say something and you say, I feel like Bonita just said something that made me feel bad. Therefore, Bonita is trying to make me feel bad. Therefore, I'm now angry at Bonita. And I got a lot of that. Um, understand at this point, it's really your responsibility to decide what are you gonna do with this? Will you stay in the reactive space and blame everyone else there? Or will you look within and say, what is within me that makes me reactive as opposed to active? And again, these days, a lot of us are finding our reactive stuff. So you are not alone. I have been finding a lot of triggers. I've been releasing a lot of PTSD, a lot of trauma, uh, a lot of misunderstandings, a lot of, um, a lot. So if you find you have a lot to release, then awesome. Because now is your opportunity to release things that no longer serve you. That's why they're coming up and grabbing at your attention, right? So it is your choice how you respond to what you find within you. But I do suggest whenever you find yourself auto-responding, triggered, highly reactive, if it's in a positive way, how fantastic. That's a very high frequency response. But I still encourage you to go and look within the source of this. If it's in a way that brings you down, you know, like a negative or traumatic way, definitely go and look at the source of this because whatever you find within you deserves to be acknowledged and, you know, allows allow itself to be representing itself. So if someone says something and you're like, oh yes, I feel so good. You can say, huh, why is it that Oh my God, the Cardinals are battling it out over the bird seed. <laughs> I'm sorry, two Cardinals were just like, no, I want this bird seed. No, I want it. And there's like plenty for everyone. Hmm. That's symbolic of what's happening in our country these days, right? Okay, so when you look in yourself and you think like, oh, every time, you know, I see birds flying around. I feel so happy. You can look in yourself and find all the times that birds make you happy. You can find all these layers of memories related to birds, talking about birds, birds singing. You have like a treasure trove of bird joy. Or if you're like, every time I see a certain person, I feel so happy. Look in and find that treasure trove of joy. And then you might find little things in there that you're like, except for this time when this person really irked me. And you're like, hmm, maybe I should acknowledge this little irk and release it. So, you know, look at your auto responses. Now, when you get an auto response of how dare you, I'm so angry, I'm offended, you know, I'm suddenly in my moral high ground or I feel betrayed or, and again, or deny, deny, you know, you're telling me I'm something I'm not. Even if someone is, look into why is this affecting you so deeply and profoundly? You will definitely find things in there that you can release, things that do not serve, things that maybe once in a while, once upon a time did serve as a reminder of, oh, you don't want to get caught in this situation again. But maybe that was like five years ago, 20 years ago, maybe you've evolved, you've matured, you no longer need this memory, this weight, putting a stone wall between you and full personal enlightenment. 
you know, this is why like um, Leroy Malouf, who's like one of the most profound teachers I ever worked with, all of his work comes down to releasing automatic responses. Because when you release the trigger, you can look within yourself and see what is your true response? What is your true belief? What is your core statement? And this is really important. Um, I mean, of course, Leroy teaches amazing, huge workshops, but on a lot like the techniques on how you do this, how you make it happen. And, you know, he's like, if that guy offered a one month workshop all day for a month, I would sign up. Mitzi, talk about auto response. Mitzi saw a squirrel, but she is leashed next to me, so she cannot go running. Talk about <laughs> frustration. Mitzi, come here. Good girl. All right. So I just wanted to say that, that remember every emotion you have is the potential for a personal lesson and a personal healing, a personal state of elevation. Um, but a few people did mention sitting on a very sharp little stick. I wonder if I was getting sore on my behind. Um, a few people did mention that they want to make sure they know what they're getting when I speak. Like if you tune in for an energy meditation and you get a rant on Black Lives Matter, some people say it's just not emotionally fair to everyone. So I'm definitely going to try to keep them separate. You'll see I have um, some a new series called Voices of Freedom. And these are people I'm interviewing to discuss like what's happening today, uh, sharing their stories. Those can run anywhere from five minutes to an hour, depending on what people want to share. Um, and so if you see Voices of Freedom, you know that's going to be about um, Black Lives Matter, so all lives can matter. You know, as they say, so long as one person is oppressed, no one is free. So that, you know, it will be a little bit obvious, but when I say we're going to do an energy meditation, it will be energy meditation. I don't regret last week at all. I think it was a very relevant um, application for us. Uh, but today we are going to... Um, focus just on energy and technique. So thank you guys. Um, and just to let you know my schedule going forward, um, Saturday mornings at 11, harness your inner fire, sacred to us. Sundays, I'm with my family. I'm not doing anything unless I happen to be invited to teach a workshop or something. Um, Monday night, I teach my Prana Shakti master students. Tuesday, I'm in a meditation group that I join, I'm not teaching, I'm just a part of. And Wednesday, I channel the Akashic Record Librarians. And um, you can find information on that on my website. Uh, I encourage anyone who's interested, join our monthly membership. The cost of a monthly membership is the same cost as a single event ticket. And when you're in the monthly membership, you also get access to their little micro videos that they put throughout the week. And um, you get access to the entire history library of all of their previous channeling. The librarians are trying to teach us how to come together. And like all the work we're doing here, you know, about releasing trauma and becoming very powerful, they're teaching us how to do that for our entire planet so that we can bring our planet to a new stage of enlightenment. They're very detail oriented and they give homework. <laughs> They're librarians, you know. <laughs> Thursday um, is my, uh, there's a group of us, we're all writing books and we meet every Thursday to support each other and share what we've worked on. 
Friday, I work with my Prana Shakti Masterclass, and then Saturday, we're here. So, um, and then I have the Voices of Freedom videos popping up throughout the week. Okay, so there we are. Uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, I take um, private sessions in the daytime. There's generally one or at, like I book up pretty much in advance, but these days there's usually like one or two on a Tuesday or Thursday available um, if you want a private reading or a past life reading. Okay, here we go. You guys ready? Let's do this. If you are able to uh, look at the images that I gave you, either now or later, you'll see two sets of images. Um, one, and I just downloaded all the chakra ones from a quick Google search of chakras outside of the physical body. So, um, and I have a little variety there. There were, um, there were others that had certain chakras as the Christ consciousness and things like that. Um, since chakras were around long before Christ, um, I didn't add those, but I, just because I didn't want to explain about all that. The important thing to understand is we have these major chakras in our body that we're very comfortable working with. And most of us think of our chakras as projecting forward because our awareness mostly projects forward. But these chakras also project behind us and to the sides. And most of us, when we think about it, we're able to open the chakras behind us, but we find it really hard opening them to the sides and the angles and the, but the chakras can go in every direction. However, since most of us, our awareness is ahead of us, the chakras that go ahead of us are the most easily powerful connective points. If you spend time really meditating like every day on the chakras behind you or your chakras radiating left and right or at angles, like really meditating on it and focusing on it so you're able to hold this energy in your awareness, those chakras will become just as powerful as the ones blasting ahead. Um, because our imagination, our intention, our awareness is that powerful. We are able to manifest realities. You know, I mean, look around, look at the home you live in, look at your life, look at your job, look at what you're wearing. All of that came from your concept of manifesting, your intuition, your creative impulse, your imagination of saying, I need a job. What kind of job do I want? I want to live in a house. So what kind of, or an apartment or, you know, under a roof. <laughs> so what kind of space under a roof do I want? It starts with your imagination and then it becomes more and more 3D physical and real. So many of us, our imaginations for chakra stays inside our bodies. So the chakras in our bodies are very real to us. We don't think about the fact that our physical body is actually a small point, a small part of our actual body. You know, in Hindu, we talk about the five bodies. Um, in spirituality, spiritualism, uh, you know, and related churches, the metaphysical society, we talk about your auric emanation being a part of the extension of your body. Um, I put some images, I think 11 images or 13 from Desda Zuckerman, who has a program of working with your sacred anatomy. She has a wonderful book. I have it. I've read it multiple times called Your Sacred Anatomy. Just a caveat. It's like $60. So it's not something you just like grab on a whim. Um, 
it is as interesting to read as a college anatomy textbook. So if you do not enjoy reading a college anatomy textbook, you may not enjoy reading it. If you're like, ooh, I love Gray's Anatomy, I love, you know, then this might be very interesting for you to read. I will say also Desda does wonderful live stream classes and she has a lot of videos on YouTube and um, her website, Your Sacred Anatomy, I think .com. Um, totally recommend, uh, her work can get like really intense, but it's fascinating because she brings a concept that our physical body is only the tiniest little part of our actual body, which she brings 20 to 40 feet around our physical body. And you say, well, wait a minute. If my body is that big, how can I be in a crowded room, obviously outside of coronavirus times, with a bunch of other people? Because our actual body is vibrating at a frequency that's unique for each of us. But for those of you who are really like, you know, if there's someone you're like, I just don't like being around them. As soon as they get close, I feel, ooh, because their frequency is not harmonious with yours. Or feel like every time anyone gets near me, I just like, I light up. I feel so, I feel like my energy is magnified. Their frequency is harmonious with yours. Um, and if you're still like, but I don't get it. How can our bodies, like, how can this work? Think about this, um, the shaman Rahelio, and when I'll try to get a link to this, it's, it's really awesome, gave this wonderful, uh, he was, um, he's in uh, Sedona, and he's just such a great guy, I adore him. He um, was telling a story in an interview about how he goes hiking through these mountains every day in the Sedona Park. And he knows it's like the back of his hands. In fact, he's like a tour guide there. His tours are quite extraordinary, a shamanic historical tour. And um, he was hiking one day and this beautiful woman appeared before him. He could tell she was not human. She just had that like, tall and very energetic golden energy emanating she just looked like the ultimate like like angelic human alien light being goddess presence and she said to him um and i forget it's like long in a row but she's like would you like to come with me and visit my planet and he's like yeah i would so they go to a cliff face on a butte and he knows these mountains again like the back of his hands the door or the wall of the mountain opens up and there's a spaceship in this mountain now he knows there's not actually a spaceship in the mountain because he knows this mountain it's a solid natural mountain yet here there is a spaceship and they walk in and it closes and they're in a spaceship. And then a moment later, the doors open and they are on her planet because the spaceship was in a different vibrational frequency than the mountain. So they could be in the same space at the same time in different frequencies. Um, and I myself have had numerable comparable experiences to that. So I can tell you. Um, it's real, it's true. So our bodies are so much wider than we give ourselves credit for. And that's also what I'm talking about. When you open yourself up to the divine and you bring all the energy into yourself and you let it emanate out, it's not just emanating into space. You are filling up your body. You are you know, like filling your essence with power. So when you do this, you don't need to do like the robe of light, the robe of mirrors, the orb of protection. You don't need to hide behind protection because you are empowering yourself in mind, body, and spirit, extending out. 
And you feel like, well, that's great. But when I open up my crown to bring in all this energy to fill me, flow through me, emanate from me, that's a big thing to ask of my crown chakra. And my root chakra, like they get overloaded and then I get queasy and vertigo. Even when I release the, uh, you know how we start with the hourglass of energy and then if more energy is coming in, you release the hourglass. What I've been doing is helping you get connected to and comfortable with your body outside of your physical body. I'm very tricky that way. You had no idea I was doing that. Um, so we have been, in a way, working with our sacred body and allowing it to sort of start puffing up, so to speak. Um, and I am not a teacher of sacred anatomy. Um, I work with uh, someone, uh, Jean-Marie Klitzner, who is an amazing sacred anatomy healer. I study with her, but I will never, ever be um, good enough at it or certified to be a teacher. So I can bring your awareness to it. And then I recommend you go visit Jean-Marie Klitzner, uh, who's in the Tyson's Corner, Virginia area, or De go to Desda Zuckerman's website for the actual information. But you'll see we have many layers of information or of, of energy going out. And what are these layers of energy? They're comparable to the layers of energy within, right? So we're flowing with layers this way and we're flowing with layers this way. We're also flowing with layers going up and layers going down, chakras. And these chakras are connected to the layers around us. They're also connected to our sacred bodies. You know, if you follow the chakras going above your head, eventually you'll get to your soul. That's the Hara line that the Hindus talk about. And if you follow even above that, eventually you get to source. And if you follow the chakras below you, eventually you get to Gaia. So we are connected in both ways to the both aspects of creation. Okay. I don't care if you call it God and Mother Earth, God and Gaia, Source, Divine Mother, spiritual, etheric, physical, magical. It doesn't matter what you call it. Um, what you call it is what makes you feel lit up. And that's part of what lets you know what kind of path you're walking in this life. So the people talk about, oh, it's so hard to work with the chakras outside of your body because they're less and less solid. They're energy. All of our chakras are energy. We're energy. The chakras in our body are easier to work with because we give more attention to them just as we give more attention to the energy in front of us. But as I said, if you made meditate every day on the energy going behind you or, you know, pick any direction and feel it, you are enhancing your energetic connection. And it's the same. We just don't pay attention to the chakras between us and our soul. So therefore, we're not, you know, building our awareness. We're not like doing our daily workout. So they're flimsy. But the more you work with them, the more powerful they become. It is absolutely possible for you to become aware of every single chakra from Gaia to Source. I know I've done it. I don't know how often I can pull that one off in my life. It took months of preparation for me and like basically a weekend of just meditating with it. But it was super cool. But I know very divine people who are able to do this. And, um, but you know, that might not be your interest in this life. In this life, you may wish though to connect with your soul because your soul knows how you planned your life. And your soul knows like lots of great advice on how to manage your life. 
So if you can learn to get the same awareness we had in our body, to get that awareness to the chakras between you and your soul, you will be doing yourself a huge favor. Talk about making it easy to release the triggers. <laughs> You're like, wait a minute, is this a life lesson or is this something I should avoid? You know, like it can make your life a whole lot easier. And if you start working the chakras below your body, you get more and more one with earth magic. And just imagine when you get to the point where you are one with the crystals and the underwater waves and the core of earth fire, and you can feel the plate tectonics and you can feel like when the wind is going to shift or when those cicadas will finally come out from the ground, like, hello, where are they? Um, or you can feel like the worms going through the earth and listen to their beautiful song. Oh my God. The earth mandala is one of the most sacred energy grids on our planet. So beautiful. Connecting with all of that. Then, like when you go to do animal communication, it is so open and natural. And when you go to communicate with trees and, you know, elements, it becomes so natural. And it's such a beautiful way to communicate. So working your chakras below your body really opens you up for that. And working your chakras above your body to your soul also connects you with your guides, your guardian angel. You know, it just really gives you wonderful knowledge and information and support. And here's the thing. As I said, we have a body outside of our physical body. The more you are working these chakras, the more you are empowering your body outside of your physical body. And then you go out and people go, oh, my God, are you an enlightened one? <laughs> You're like, you, people sense your, um, your connections. They feel like all of those traumas that are, that are getting you down now, they're like filled with love. So, um. Having said that, I would, uh, first of all, I want to thank everyone for the beautiful hellos. And remember, I have images of um, all of these. Uh, Facebook doesn't allow me to post images in the comments of when I'm live streaming. So I have all these images in a separate post. And then... Later today, I'll go into my uh, the online program where I have the li the catalog of all of these videos, and I'll for today's video load today's video and all those images and links to the resources that can be uh, helpful to you. Okay, so I'd like to do a quick meditation. Thank you all sitting through my long lecture, waiting for this. Um, I would like you to, you know, just go ahead and give your bodies permission to relax. And give yourself a quick check like we've been practicing of just opening up your crown, giving your crown permission to open. And you'll notice your root chakra automatically naturally opens. And as your root chakra naturally opens and spreads deep and wide, your crown chakra naturally spreads even higher and wider. And give them permission to balance with each other, become comfortable for your energy flowing. And you'll feel the energy flowing through your body. Going on down. And even with your awareness of what I just presented a moment ago, you can feel your body, your energy beneath you is comfortable going deeper and wider. 
because you realize you're not going into unexplored territory. You're going through your energetic body. It very comfortably becomes one with Gaia's domain. You'll notice as your crown chakra opens up high and wide, You can feel your energy is there, like a divine energy stream of flow. And what's extraordinary, give yourself a moment to just be aware of this. Energy doesn't just flow in one way, it's flowing in both ways. Flowing in both ways, and in some points wrapping around itself or going into a chakra area outside of or inside your body, sending an extra energy to parts of your physical being that need it. Just give yourself a moment and just let the energy naturally flow through your being. If you find any areas that feel uh, pressure or trauma, or heavy emotions, anxiety, or blocks, acknowledge them and just invite them like a dry sponge sitting beside a beautiful healing fresh water spring. Invite them, just absorb the energy and see what happens. So beautiful. And now allow yourself to really sense in whatever way you naturally sense within your body, the energy as it's flowing, emanating. And remember spirit sight, spirit vision is not about seeing visually, it's about receiving energy, receiving messages in whatever shape they take. It may be visual, it may be emotional, physical, auditory, codes flowing in, downloads of information, memories that rise up. So however you are receiving your information, acknowledge it and thank it and say to yourself, I am open, I am receptive. My spirit sight is amazing with receiving information. However you are seeing it, fill it in there. Now become aware of the energy around your body and invite the energy that's flowing through your body to emanate out around you as well. No effort on your side, just an invitation and then awareness as the energy is flowing. Take a, a look. Bring your senses to observing how the energy emanates from you. Does it stay close to your body? Does it shoot far out? Or are some parts close and some parts go out? Or does it seem to go through? Does it seem to go through little rivulets? and tributaries to certain areas. Just invite the energy to emanate and then observe with whatever senses you're utilizing, observe what happens.
if there's any responses, physical or emotional inside your body, acknowledge them and give them permission to just open up and release with the fullest state of love. And now, as you're so beautifully connected with your awareness of what's happening with your energy, bring your awareness on up. Invite your awareness to flow upward above your head. <laughs> 